everyone. This is me. Oh, this is my, these are my kids. I think, I don't know if you guys are like sick of seeing how like I post a lot about them. Or sent emails about them. Uh, my three kids, Ellie, this one, uh, she's like three, one, and almost six. I go through this every time. So I'm a mortgage broker, not a bank. So that means brokers, I guess they're broke. They don't have the money, if you can just remember that. I'm not Wells Fargo, I'm not Chase, I'm not those retail banks who actually have the money and lend their own money out. I'm the broker, so I help my clients find the right lenders and programs to work with. So I have access to over 100 different lenders, and that's why I'm able to have the ability to great shop and come up with creative solutions. All right, so the big change that's gonna be coming in 2020 is that there's gonna be new conforming loan limits. So right now, we're about, across the country, conforming loan limits around like 484,000. Next year is going to be five hundred ten thousand, and in high cost areas like where we are, it's going to be seven hundred six hundred thousand six hundred. So conforming loan amounts pretty much anything within these loan limits, and um, they follow the uh, guidelines from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Anything above seven hundred sixty-five thousand six hundred is going to be a jumbo loan, and jumbo loan just means that you're going to go with the portfolio lender and they have their own specific guidelines. So you're gonna go with whatever bank's guidelines are. And what I think some people don't know is if you're in between 500,000 and 765,000, you can actually do either one. You can potentially qualify for conforming or for portfolio loans or for jumbo loans. So more choices. All right, so is this a benefit? Yes, because I think the more home buyers are gonna be able to qualify because the guidelines are a little bit uh, less strict. And jumbo guidelines are definitely different. And so I thought it'd be helpful to kind of go through a few examples so you can kind of see the difference between the two and kind of <coughs> get a little bit more familiar. So case study one is actually clients of Nicole's. And they have excellent credit, they have really good income, they're steady jobs, uh, they have W-2. And the problem they had was, not problem, but the thing with their file was their reserves, right? So when I told them that their you know, highest purchase price could be you know, less than a million, they are really surprised. They are wondering like, well, we have the excellent credit scores, we have good jobs, like what's the problem? So I explained to them the reserves. Reserves is just the money that you need after closing costs, after down payment is taken care of because the lender wants to make sure that you can make your housing payments if you lose your job or, or something like that. So, so I took a snapshot of the guidelines for one of the jumbo lenders. And like I said, because the jumbo lenders, it's all specific to the lender, this is not the one that everyone goes by, but it's probably the most popular one. So this one, up to two million, they want 12 months of housing payments. And anything over two million, this lender wants 24 months of housing payments. Um, some lenders also want the reserves to be liquid. Right, so after your 200 to 400 to $500,000 down payment, they want you to have all this money left over liquid. And that's, like I said, that's not all lenders, but some lenders should like that. So the way that we're gonna be able to pre-approve them for the amount that they want, one, we're able to couple it into two loans. One is a conforming loan amount, the 765,000 plus another equity line. Um, or I have a lender that has looser reserve requirements, they only need six months, and they don't need to be liquid. They can be in a retirement or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the rate is slightly higher than if you were to go to a straight, you know, jumbo lender with very strict guidelines, but at least we can get them the house, you know, that they want. So the next one is actually very, like, straight. I think everybody kind of knows, like, credit score. So uh, conforming goes down to like 620, FHAs, 580, or even lower. VA, there's no minimum credit score, uh, no technical one, but the lender might have their own. Uh, Jumbo, this is a little bit standard, like 700 is their minimum. Like if you have under 700, a lot of times Jumbo lenders won't want to lend to you. I say all of them, but a lot of them. And really for you to get really good um, pricing, you want over like 740, 760, 780. Whereas the conforming is not not that strict. You can get pretty good pricing over 700. Um, 
So for conforming loans, if you have credit for like two years, it doesn't really matter, like you know, six point. So the other one that's a little bit more tricky is the trade lines. So trade lines are the accounts that you have that you owe money to. So mortgage, uh, credit cards, car loans, student loans, things like that. So this was a snapshot of one of my lenders in the four different jumbo products they have. So this is the same lender, just different products. And these are the requirements for their trade lines. So this one, it says they have to have at least three open trade lines and they have to have used them for open for 24 months, um, and all of them need to have acted for the last 12 months. So when you think about it, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but there's a lot of these um, first-time home buyers who have like excellent credit, lots of money, and they think that they can just qualify for a jumbo loan. But And they tell me, oh, I have no debt. I'm like, oh God, okay, that's good. <laughs> and then, it's good debt. <laughs> yeah, but they have, they don't have any debt. They yeah. literally have no debt. They might have one credit card and sucks, but they actually can't qualify for some jumbo loans because they don't have enough trade lines. And the thought process is the lender wants to make sure that they know that you are you can have credit extended to you and you're able to be responsible and pay them. So that's kind of the thought process of why they want you to have some credit, um, some a few trade lines going on. So you can't just open one because you're going to be a house because that's why they say they want it you know, 12, activating in the last 12 months and one of them open for 24 months. Uh, oops. Can I ask a question on that? Yes. So yes. if you did have debt and then paid it off, would they consider that? Or are you... That's okay. Yeah. You, can you That's go backwards? In other words, if you start paying stuff off and then all of a sudden you're debt free, does that mean that you start losing credit? Um, okay. So if you... So they want open... So if you have three of them open, sometimes they even count if it's closed, but there has to have activity from before. So like people pay off car loans and things like that. That's fine. Um, so they don't, they want to make sure that you've had multiple trade lines open and that you're responsible and it reflects in your credit score that you were, you know, paying things on time. Uh, if I miss it? Sorry. No. Oh. Uh, she was, oh, and the one, not all lenders, like I said, but there are some, I know I've worked with some lenders where they had good pricing, but they wanted you to have an installment loan. So installment loan is a loan that you have that's the same every single month, like a mortgage, student loan, uh, you know, car loan, right? Revolving credit is, it revolves, it goes up and down, whatever. So you think about someone who wants to buy a house, they obviously don't have a mortgage, because they're gonna go buy a house for the first time. But what if they don't have a car loan or a student loan? You think you're like, you know, doing the right thing, but sometimes it's harder for them to qualify. So for conforming loans, really there's not much like in terms of minimum trade line requirement. They just want to make sure that you've been, you know, have two year history. Okay, so even though I just told you guys like all these different ways that I can do different loans, um, <laughs> I'm not a great fit for everyone, but here's some of the situations that, you know, I would be the right fit. So if pricing is really important, for conforming, usually the broker is better I'm talking about generally speaking. Generally speaking, the brokers are always gonna, most of the time are gonna be better in pricing versus the retail banks. The retail banks, they have the jumbo products and they have, it's their own money and then they have made their own guidelines. Um, okay, so let's say you need a jumbo loan. Usually the big bank is better unless you don't fit their guidelines, right? So if you don't, if for some reason you have reserve issues or credit issues or whatever, then of course it's not gonna work. Or if you don't have like perfect credit, um, to give you an example, I won't name names, but uh, some people in this group may or may not be here. They make like very good money. They have lots of assets, a lot good credit, whatever. And they came to me and they told me, and I was like, you know, your scenario fits really well with a retail bank. You should probably go check with your retail bank, see if they can give you um, good pricing because a lot of times they, they want to keep your business because they're thinking they'll get your mortgage, they'll get your credit cards, they'll get your checking, they'll get your whatever. And they also, a lot of times the banks will, you know, fight over the business, which is good for the consumer. And so you might be able to get better pricing there. Uh, but with that said, I think there's good and bad practitioners in every single industry. So even if someone thinks with an ex bank, uh, I might actually be able to still refer them a good loan officer from that bank. 
So I feel like I don't want people to be afraid to kind of contact me and just ask me, like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, what is this, you know, is this good pricing? Where do you think I should go? Because I will let you know if, um, if, I, if I think generally you might do better with your current bank. I'm almost done. I literally have like one. Nine, three minutes. Oh, three minutes. Okay, I already finished. Um, okay. So the last one. So if you want to know all your options, broker every time. Just because brokers will 100% of the time have more options, obviously. Whether the pricing, it depends on your situation. I'm, that one I have to really look at your file to see if there's something that's not very obvious. Okay, so top five fair referrals, first time home buyers. There's something just about first time home buyers because I feel like I kind of know what they're going through. A lot of my circle of influence are first time home buyers. Um, that's why I don't do reverse mortgages. Like I, I refer that out to someone in my office because that's he deals with that a lot. So I focus a lot more on first time home buyers. Um, and I also have programs just for first time home buyers that actually they don't have at a lot of the other banks. Uh, I'm working a lot with people who are getting cash out right now and they're building ADUs, you know, the accessory dwelling units. They're like taking money out of their house and they're building it and they're like renting it out and making money. So I feel like a lot of people are doing that. Or if um, I see them doing it, if they want to kind of age in place, but they want you know, their kids to get the big house and they have the really, really nice new ADU in the back. Um, someone who wants to upgrade their home, but they're not sure if they want to uh, sell or buy first. Uh, an investor who is looking to acquire rental property. I have, I have programs where you just need the rent to cover the, the payment. It has nothing to do with the income. We don't even need to see the income from the borrower. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the last one is self-employed or business owners looking to purchase or refinance. Because business owners, I think a lot of us are business owners, you want to write everything off because you don't want to pay more taxes than you need to. Um, whereas W-2, you don't get to write everything. You don't get to write off you know, your cars, your cell phone, all this. Well, maybe, but generally speaking, self-employed bars will have a harder time to qualify, even if they do really, really well. So I have bank sale programs, um, another program specifically for self-employed borrowers, if you know anybody. And that's it. Questions? I have a minute. <laughs> or less. <coughs> minute. I have a minute. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. No. How do the, um, the guidelines differ for business owners that, don't, that aren't W-2 employees? So, in terms of like qualifying, well, they mm -hmm. just want to see a last two years of tax returns and they want to average it out. Um, sometimes conforming, you can only use one year. Uh, generally, jumbo, you want two years. And then some of the jumbo lenders, if they see like a huge discrepancy, like let's say you make like a million one year and then you make like 500,000 the next year, sometimes they might not want that because they're like, well, what is your business like dying? Mm -hmm. even though you're making five hundred thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. so they're a little bit stricter about trends like it, okay. if it, there's a difference between like 20 percent or more sometimes they won't even take it um so then the conforming is going to be a little bit easier to qualify but let's say you write everything off anyways mm -hmm. then you can go with the bank statement program bank statement they just look at all the deposits that you do and they don't even look at your tax returns okay. which is cool a okay. little different than stated but yeah similar they just look at your bank statements to see, okay, you have all these commissions coming in and all these sales coming in, and then they derive the number versus, they don't look at everything you're, you're writing off. All right, thank you. Thank you.